There seems to be a lot of confusion about oxidation, and ultimately, if oxidation is potentially the cause of so much chronic illness, how could we be talking about hyperbaric oxygen adding oxidation to patients? And one of the comments and questions that I get from a lot of these videos is how do we know if a patient is already potentially over-oxidized? And if they are, how do we know how much hyperbaric, how much pressure, what frequency and duration we should use to be safe and also effective simultaneously? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So I've covered the concept of oxidation and hyperbaric being an oxidative therapy and ultimately why it's safe to still use hyperbaric even though it's an oxidative therapy. But because there's so many questions about that, I recommend you watching some of our previous videos on hyperbaric and oxidation to get a better understanding of where oxidation becomes dangerous, but also the fact that oxidation is a necessary signaling molecule stimulating repair and regeneration of tissue. So if you're not all that familiar with that concept, please take a look at that older video that we did. This conversation is getting a little bit more into, okay, we have a patient, they have chronic illness potentially. We're not treating that illness directly, but we know that they have oxidation. And we know that the hyperbaric chamber is going to add some amount of oxidation to them. How do we know if we're being safe? How do we know if that patient is already over oxidized? And how can we apply hyperbaric in a way to make sure that we're being safe and effective simultaneously? One of the concepts that we covered in detail in those other videos is that there is oxidation from the outside world and there's oxidation that comes from within. They're very different and the body responds to those types of oxidation very differently. So the oxidation that most patients are exposed to or that I would consider the source of oxidation that's associated with their chronic illness is oxidation from the outside world. And the majority of the oxidation that a patient is going to receive through hyperbaric is not simply because they're breathing oxygen. It's because that oxygen is gonna be used for increased energy production and a natural byproduct of energy production inside the mitochondria is reactive oxygen species. Nonetheless, that will still cause some degree of increased oxidation inside their body. One approach to this entire concept is to do what we do in my office, but that we also teach to the people coming to our certification courses, is to always just start slow. So for us, almost every patient is going to start at a lower pressure and a lower percentage of oxygen. And over time, we're going to build the pressure and build the percentage of oxygen, build the frequency and build the duration. By doing that, we're accomplishing a few things. Number one is, we're not over oxidizing them. We're doing it in a very slow and strategic way. Number two is we're literally pre treating them, allowing the benefits of hyperbaric to start to begin without over oxidizing them, and then allowing them to tolerate higher levels of oxidation through the hormetic effect. And I think overall, that's probably the best and safest way to just know that you're being safe. However, in cases where you feel like you really need to get to higher pressures faster, how do you know? if ultimately you might be over oxidizing that person. In my experience thus far, there's no definitive test that we can do to say, okay, well, here's the level of oxidation and therefore hyperbaric is gonna add this much oxidation and that's gonna be too much. So we really need to just go by patient experience. And what I would say is patients are typically going to have a series of symptoms that they're expressing from whatever issue that they're dealing with at the time. If we start to apply hyperbaric, and we start to see some of those symptoms increasing, I believe we can start to become confident that our therapy is causing some of those symptoms to start increasing. Now, if you're treating somebody with an infection or you're treating somebody with toxicity, could they also be having a Herxheimer reaction? Of course. So we have to be very mindful to understand that sometimes we apply a therapy and patients express symptoms and it appears like they're getting worse before they get better. That certainly does happen. But that approach also needs to account for the fact that we wanna do this into patient tolerance. We don't wanna exceed patient's tolerance for the therapy. If we keep pushing harder and they keep getting worse and we keep pushing harder, other consequences could start to build because of that. If we push a little bit and they get some symptoms and so we hold it there and those symptoms calm down, so we push a little harder and they get a rise in symptoms and then they calm down, so we push a little harder, and eventually we can keep pushing and their symptoms keep getting better. That's the ideal scenario. But this has to be a dialogue between the clinic, the practitioners, and the patients to understand what their patient tolerance is, how hard they can push, when do they need to schedule some breaks, and when do they need to hold the protocol, even if it's lower than they want it to be for the longevity of their care plan, 
but hold it there until the patient starts to respond favorably to the therapy. Generally speaking, it would be very rare for a patient to come in with a set of symptoms and then for hyperbaric to cause a whole new set of unrelated symptoms, and that's because of the oxidative effect. In 17 years of doing hyperbaric, I've never seen that happen. A simple example might be the patient has brain fog and headaches. We start doing some hyperbaric, and maybe there is a slight increase in brain fog or in those headaches. But again, we work through that and help manage those symptoms, and then we only push as hard as the patient can handle. It would be very rare for a patient with brain fog and headaches to undergo hyperbaric, for that hyperbaric to increase oxidative stress inside the body, and now the patient comes up with seven new symptoms they've never had before that are related to oxidative stress. So we can be pretty confident that if our therapy is aggravating or lighting up the same series of symptoms that they came in with, that it's likely that the hyperbaric chamber might be increasing their oxidation and therefore they're expressing those symptoms at a greater level. And now it's up to you as the clinician or as the clinic to understand this conversation, to open a dialogue with that patient, to discuss tolerance, and then to reconfigure that protocol to make sure that you're being effective, but you're also keeping that patient safe and comfortable throughout that journey. So the goal of this video is just to open up a conversation about oxidative stress and how to manipulate our protocols to help patients deal with oxidative stress, get through that, and then ultimately get the treatment that they need. Most of our patients are over-oxidized. Hyperbaric does increase oxidation and how strategically we expose them to hyperbaric to help get to the root of their issues and to help them meet their health goals. Therefore, we need to be strategic about how we approach our hyperbaric protocols, keeping these things in mind, and be flexible with your plans and your protocols to meet patient tolerance and also get the results that you and they are looking for. Now, an entirely different strategy that you could implement with patients who you know or suspect have oxidative stress issues already would be to use antioxidants, exogenous antioxidants, as part of their protocol to buffer some of the consequences of hyperbaric from an oxidative stress standpoint. Now we've done a few videos on that, so please take a look at those videos when and if to use antioxidants as part of your hyperbaric protocol and when not to use antioxidants as part of your hyperbaric protocol. I think that'll help round out the rest of this conversation. As always, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.